Good morning and welcome to the Killick and Co Market Update. Deliveroo made records yesterday as the worst IPO in London history, and that was very embarrassing for lead bankers Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan. Deliveroo shares were down 26% on the first day of trading, and that was after the company had to reduce its starting price last week. There are a number of possible reasons for the poor share price performance on day one. One is possibly the fact that a number of big institutional investors last week said they didn't want to invest in Deliveroo because they disagree with how the company treats its employees. Another reason is the fact that a number of big hedge funds are supposedly shorting the stock, and that would have pushed the share price down yesterday. Another reason is that although the company is big enough to be in the FTSE 100 index, it's not eligible to be in the index because the founder has insisted on a so-called dual share class structure. And this means that the founder has one type of shares, which give him lots of additional votes and allow him to have control over the company, whereas everyone else has a different type of share with less votes. The fact that the stock is not eligible for the FTSE 100 means that the shares won't be bought by the various FTSE 100 passive and tracker funds, which could have provided lots of support to the share price. A number of newspapers this morning have been comparing the performance of Deliveroo to the early days of Facebook. If you have a look at the share price chart here, you can see that Facebook performed very poorly in the months following its IPO before going on to be very successful. It's too early for us to say how delivery will perform from now on, and it really depends on people's behaviour after lockdown. Will people go out to eat once they're allowed to, or are we now addicted to deliveries? Joe Biden gave a speech yesterday in which he outlined his plans for infrastructure spending in the US. He would like to spend $2 trillion on infrastructure, and he would like to fund that with corporate tax rises. Although tax rises can be a drag on growth, spending on infrastructure has historically been shown to boost growth, firstly by creating lots of extra jobs, and secondly by helping the economy to run more efficiently once those infrastructure projects have been finished. If approved, Joe Biden's plans could be very good news for infrastructure companies across the US. We've been having a look at American Waterworks. American Waterworks is a water utility company in the US. Shares in utility companies can sometimes be treated like bonds because of their constant cash flows, and we have seen a number of them being caught up in the bond market sell-off that's happened over the last couple of months, as you can see here on the share price chart for American Waterworks. However, if Joe Biden's plans are approved, it could provide an opportunity for lots of these companies to grow. The FCA has been getting worried about the amount of risk that young and or inexperienced investors seem to be taking, either by day trading and trying to make money quickly, or by buying so-called high-risk products such as options and cryptocurrencies. The regulator has commissioned a piece of research to try and get a better understanding of how these investors think and what they're most likely to buy. And here's quite an interesting chart that we've taken from this research. It shows the percentage of respondents to their survey that have bought either of these high-risk products. The blue bars show the percentage of experienced investors that have bought these products, and the green bars show the percentage of inexperienced investors that have bought these products. As you can see, the inexperienced investors are much more likely to have bought most of these high-risk products. What's probably needed here is a greater le level of education, but sadly what's more likely is that we'll get more regulation coming down the tracks that will restrict what investors are allowed to buy. Moving on to have a look at next week, as you can see it's looking incredibly quiet on the corporate calendar front, so I wish you all a very happy Easter and I look forward to seeing you next Friday.